Hello everybody, Just Mike here. Thanks for stopping in again. We have a Master Crafters clock that is obviously vintage and it's a fireplace clock and I've noticed that it it runs when it wants to but usually the, the fire itself, I guess we'll call it, gets hung up. So let's take a look at this. So here's my clock. It pretty much has everything to it which is, let's say, unusual because normally they don't have this in front of it. They don't have this flowers and whatnot around it. And it did come, I haven't unwrapped it, but it did come with the two uh, metal things that hold the log in. And this is the log, but we're looking at the back side of it. So let's take a look at the back of this thing. I've already taken the liberty of taking the two nuts off and the two screws out. And we do have a little bit of, we'll say, rust damage to it, to the back side anyway. And this has a real motor. I don't know if this is a replacement motor or not because the ones I've seen normally have the holes in it and this whole thing spins. So that might be a replacement. And to get the clock to work, you have to move this gear here a little bit. And it'll, the clock actually will start up. And so I'm going to guess that the gear is still good in there. It's just that this barrel seems awful tight in here and will hang up. And there, you get the disc to go, but the, the fire doesn't want to go. So we're going to take a look at that part there and we might just go ahead and take this whole works out too so we can see if it needs cleaned and to show you how to do it. Now this one usually when they have that motor or that ring that in my words tells you it's a nicer clock. And don't forget when you see the, this, that tells you this is a motor-driven clock compared to the one with the line in it. It's still a motor, but to me it's a weaker motor. I could be wrong, but that's just my feelings. In fact, let me show you on this clock that happens to be sitting here with the kids swinging. This is the one I'm talking about, the line here. This doesn't have the same type of motor as that one there. And I already have a video out on this one. So if you're curious to take a look at it, it's in there in the description, or not the descriptions, but in, in my videos if you know how to get through my channel to see more clocks. And this one, I might have it already listed as Master Crafters. I do have three or four of them that are going to be coming out all together. So on these clocks, this one's missing the tube. I do have a nut on here. The nut belongs on the outside. And this tube actually isn't that important. It's made so when you put the nuts back on the, on the back right here that you compress this instead of pushing into the motor in which like I say normally this here spins around but this is a different type motor. All you have to do is just make sure you don't put them on too tight. It's nice to have those if they're available in your clock. And yes they go on each one of these here to tighten the back to it. I'm going to go ahead and take the bulb out. Now I replaced this bulb already. That's why it's got the silver end. Usually the brass ended ones, I'd swear the ones original with the clock, which is surprising because I think these clocks came out in the 50s. So the next thing I'm going to do, oh that's another thing too, these things 
you don't want to screw the screw in too tight. This one fell off and I tried using super glue. I got to use an epoxy, I think, instead. But, uh, I'm going to go ahead and dewire this a little bit so you don't have this cord hanging all over us. Okay, I pulled the power wire off of here. Just get some of these wires out of our way for now. I got the two screws taken out and hopefully it'll just come right out. It's got a peg in the floor. So let's go ahead and see if we can push this thing through and get it out that way. There, now it's coming out. So the first thing I need to fix, figure this barrel out. So coming to this, you can't do too much with this until you get this face off. And this is glass, by the way. Normally your motored ones, this would be glass compared to the ones that are non-motor or a motor like this, it'll be a plastic uh, deal here. And also this has got the nice brass colored thing around it. This one does not. And so to get that lens out on this one, from the back it's got a peg here and a peg here. You have to kind of push in and shove it out to get that off of there. So this one these tabs they have on here, those you have to straighten out in order to get the, the dial, or I shouldn't say really the dial, in order to get the brass ring off that also holds the glass. Now it's not that important, but realistically these tabs that are bent on here you don't have to bend both of them in. You can just put one in over to hold the motor to the dial. So that way you're not weakening them. Because actually what it's meant for is if one breaks off, you still have another one to pull it back together. And this whole thing's bent in, which I understand that because usually they're, they're hard to get it back through the clock and attached. Okay, I was able to finally get it off. This has got a bunch of like corrosion on here, like something's gotten in here. Now very well could be this clock had moisture on it. Because it's old enough, people get tired of their clocks and they throw them out in the garage because the light burn out. Or it could be because they're just tired of it. It's hard to tell them. So anyway, the only thing next to do is you got to get these hands off. And once I get the hands off, I'll be back. I'm going to go ahead and use my fingers. And if my fingers don't work, I'm going to use the pliers on there. I do have a... Maybe I'll show it to you. I do have a hand remover. The way this thing works is this round thing, you open it, open it up by unscrewing it. You notice it's opening up. You put it over your hand and you screw this down so it goes underneath the hand. And then this thing has a point on it, a flat point, but you screw it in. That's supposed to push on that shaft in the center so that way the guts aren't being pulled out of the clock. It's being pushed in and then that causes the hand to come up.
Now this also, whether you missed or not, has a washer that sets down there first. Now this is an aluminum dial, aluminum, I don't want to call it paper dial. So I might be able to clean this up, I'm hoping anyway. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and take these four, four, three, one, two, three nuts off to get this plate to start coming off. Anyway, while we're here, this here pops off pretty easy. The lower part is hooked on with a hook like. This here just kind of snaps into place. And so there's a chance you can just pull this thing out give it a pop or get in here and then pop it and then see that hook so I got those four off of there this plate should just lift right out of here now This here actually looks like, which it is, this part of the holding this whole thing together. That's weird. So here you have your hour hand, your one that runs, uh, changes the time because this here changes the time. This normally has a spring in here, and the spring's gone. So my guess is someone's been in here, and it's really dirty too, by the way. Um, I should be able to twist this now. And it needs to be pushed down because there's a spring plate down in here. I know my gears are starting to fall out. I don't know if I can get them out or just get them back in so I can... Get this plate out of here. There we go. So I'm going to push in, twist. It's not the motor that's meant for this. There we go. Let's set that aside a second. Kind of oily here. This is your spring plate. So your motor stays snug per se. You have to check this out. Like I said, Seems to have turned halfway decent, but it does have this oil gooped all over it. Now this, because it doesn't have nuts to hold down first, let's just take this thing apart. Won't get it all the way apart because of that part that adjusts it. The, the time. There we go. So, happy to say, just a single gear there, I'm happy to say I see this is plastic. I haven't seen the plastic one. It must be a replacement, which is a nice replacement because these some guy in Canada are selling just that. It's a fiber bushing, I guess we'll call it. Selling that for just uh, $35, I think it is. Kind of a ripoff, but if you want your clock to work again. But I'm going to have to check this out because that plastic bushing is cool compared to the other. Because, oh, and this is open, by the way, on one end. So all I have to do is slide it out. And the other end is just a peg. But anyway, I had one of these clocks. I didn't know any different. And I took a toothbrush after cleaning it and washed it and broke it in half. And technically speaking, I was screwed because I didn't know how to figure out how to make another one for as old as the clock is and everything else. Here, it's a plastic one. 
it's not gonna break again at least I hope not So I can actually even clean this one and this one here just says made in USA I don't think there's anything else on them it is a master crafters but this master crafters oh it says made in USA too let me look at my other ones I think it's made by Ses sessions and they might have that plastic part and if so I'm hoping it's a lot cheaper than buying that fiber one and you don't have to be as delicate with it because the fiber one you don't want to even touch it because it'll break on you there's how small that thing is but it is plastic really happy to see that So let me take this stuff, including the part that makes the logs look like they're on fire, take that and put them in my cleaner and get this thing rolling. I couldn't figure out how to get this off without, I don't know, dismantling it. And so what I did... This foil has got these two flaps that are in here and you just lift them up because they lock into here and you can get the foil off and I was able to clean this and this here I know it hits a little bit and it's already wrinkled which I imagine that helps uh, reflect the fire look to it. But I'm going to go ahead and roll this out flat and then put it back on here and see how well it does. I just soon not glue it on here because it wasn't glued before. So hopefully that's going to work out. I also unscrewed the light fixture off of it because I didn't want to clean it obviously. So anyway, all this is now clean. I love the idea of this plastic gear on here compared to that fiber one that breaks all the time. Whether this is on all the session works, I don't know. But I think this is my first session clock that I got and opened it up and found that plastic gear on there. Makes me really happy. I don't have to worry about it. So here I rolled it out. It still has its bumps in there that were originally put in for bling, I'm going to guess. Now we're going to go ahead and reset this in here. These tabs are going to have to be bent up so it'll fit in here. Sounds easy enough to do, but it acts like it's too short, it's just that it's not laying down. There we go. And just bend these back over like they had them. Now we have our bling back. So now I need to oil just the ends there. And I'm not worried about the rust or anything else. I'll add my screw back in here, the light. There. Now this aluminum is inside the barrel itself so it shouldn't hit anymore. 
because it does write on that. And get it back down in its hole. Oops. And we'll screw this back together again. Now this works a lot better. Doesn't take anything to move this. This fiber gear, the or not fiber gears, plastic. It'll go into the hole first and then it just pops into that groove on the side. And it will fall out. So pay attention to that. And let's see. Now you can see when that motor turns, this is the sh second hand shaft that runs from the main gear and not the plastic gear. The plastic, I do believe, is just for the clock. And let's get it in there. So holding this together because that plate goes on, then the nuts. I'm going to go ahead and install the motor. I need the spring. Now we can put it in the hole and try to get this on there. And once you get them set in there, you press this down and turn it, if you can. There we go. Clicks into place in those little grooves. So now we can go ahead and set our gear on there. That's so it can change the time. And that sets on there. And let's see. Looks like it goes on this way. Yep. Oh, by the way, on the motor, I did, right at the shaft, I did add some oil to it. I didn't swamp it, but I did add some to it to try to get it to... It, it's free enough, but I just wanted to make sure it's going to stay free enough. There we go. Now I'll add those three nuts. So I went ahead and cleaned this with brass cleaner, and it does have some, what I call rust or something in here, but it's better than what it was. So this does have two places to push that paper like stuff into to keep your dial from turning on you. It does have a little brass catch there to hold on to it also. And then we can put it 
into the dial or the the glass part over it. So the easiest thing is to do this at 12 o'clock so that way you have your hands pointing at the right area. Let's twist this in to make it stay. And also so we can get it into the case. Now these I'm not going to twist in. I'm just going to bend them in so it'll be easier to get into the case. To put that back on, look for the motor shaft so you can see it. Then this just hooks on the bottom and then the that part just clips over there. So hook the bottom on first. Then you just lift up and push it on. It clicks into place. Now she's ready to go. So I think what I'm going to do, is I haven't done it yet, I'm going to go ahead and take some glass cleaner and clean this up a little bit and then install it. Now this does have the two pegs that have to fit down in. Now I do see someone broke this clock maybe putting it in or taking it out or they could have dropped the clock. There's just a spot that wants to spread. Let's see here. Now like I say normally this could fall out and when you put the back on that's what those two nuts are that go on here to hold that from falling out. So next thing I guess I need to do is go ahead and rewire this. So I need a new switch so I accidentally pulled the wire out. No big deal. Realistically, that light can run the whole time because that's the only thing you're using is power right there. And when you shut it off, the, the fire is still roaring. So now I need to get these out to show you what it looks like with the logs. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something and also I learned something new too and digging a little bit deeper trying to find cheaper gears or whatever I found that the back that has a straight line in it that I guess is evidently made from Japan because back in the day the Japanese and whatnot were always trying to corner the market 
uh, seeing that the Americans are buying these so we can just mass produce them. They made their own motor and that's why it has this cheesy looking motor inside of them. And they worked fine for a while evidently and still being sold. Uh, it kind of surprises me, well it doesn't surprise me, that the government would allow that to come into the United States instead of selling American made products. But that's just the way it was back in them days anyway thanks for stopping by don't forget to subscribe because it is free can't get free too often anymore and until next time oh don't forget to give the thumbs up too and until next time god bless